Today I'm going to be adding details to one of the rolling green hills here on the raised platform and it's the one that hosts the Lion Knight's Castle. Right now the hill is pretty easy to move, just got to remove the Lion Knight's Castle which sits on top and you got to remember that that splits into three different pieces. Once that's out of the way, I can just grab the hill that sits on two 48 by 48 base plates and bring it on over to my desk. Luckily, when I was at the Lego store the other day, I came across one by two green slopes on the pad wall and I bought a lot of them. These are going to come in super handy. It's going to take a lot of parts to get this done correctly just because the whole top is tan and it needs to be green. Also, I need to accommodate this moat here. Not sure how I'm going to do that because this is sort of a strange color and those are some really odd shaped plates. I might even have to switch out the plates or remove the moat altogether. But I sort of want the moat because it will flow off of this hill and I think it's just really nice to add water when doing landscaping. So you can see I've already started adding some of the 1x2 slopes on the side here and it definitely looks a lot better than not having those slopes. So I'm going to have to add a bunch of those and also spruce up this rock work as well. I'm not sure what I'm going to do on the top of this thing here because once again integrating the Lion Knight's Castle properly will be difficult especially when I have a look at that moat. I guess I'm just going to build away and try and make something pretty cool for this Lion Knight's Castle. So I built this green rolling hill not too long ago and it's actually just 2x4 brick that I found on the pad wall and then it's backed by staircase elements. I wish I had more staircase elements because they just do a great job of supporting those 2x4 bricks as they make their way to the top. And then what I did is just topped it with 16x16 16 16 tan plates. And it's easier to top these things with big plates, 16 by 16 specifically being the largest, so that's why I decided to top it with 10. And these green slopes are coming in super handy when it comes to blending in all of those bricks and sort of adding a nice texture to it. Now one thing I have to factor in is where this is going to be placed on the race platform because it might be beside a taller hill or a shorter hill. That's why I hesitated on adding detail in the first place because if it's beside a taller hill, there might be some blending work that has to happen between the two hills. So the first thing I did was throw down a whole bunch of slopes there to take away that sort of replicated stair look, which is just like the base structure of this. And then I also added some green slopes to the cliff edge as well. Now I am running ridiculously low on the dark gray slopes, but I actually think the green slopes do a pretty good job of adding detail to the cliff edge as well. But I for sure should order some more of the dark gray ones because I'm doing a lot of rock projects and I've done a lot of rock projects in the past. We've used thousands of those dark gray slopes. It is what it is. We'll get more eventually. I have noticed a huge increase in price on dark gray slopes though. I don't know if it's because I'm advertising the fact that I'm doing this, but they seem to be drying up on Bricklink, which is sort of a nuisance. The next thing I have to do is fit this massive castle on the top of this green hill. And it's difficult because it's massive and somewhat fragile. It's Lego, right? But what I'm doing is just putting some plate underneath the castle just to support it because everything's going to be raised up one more plate because those 16 by 16 tan plates are just the base structure. I just needed to use those to create a solid foundation for this. And then essentially everything is going to be covered with plate. I'm trying to line up the medium azure and dark azure plate with the moat and then trying to line up the green plate with the odd shaped plate underneath the castle. Now I'm sort of cheating. I'm not really converting this castle onto plate which can be like better integrated into this hill. Rather I'm actually putting plate down and then I'm going to place the castle loosely on top of that plate. A way that would make it look even better and look even more seamless on the hill would be to essentially rebuild this entire castle so that it can be based on plate that actually faces forward, isn't at those weird angles, doesn't have curves, but this castle like has all sorts of odd shapes and designs to it so to actually attach it down to like studs and integrate it like inset into this hill would be really difficult so I've just decided to go with this because I want to sort of keep this set in its original state and I think I can still integrate it properly and make it look really good. So far so good. I think the slopes on the side there really do a great job of blending in those bricks and I'm sure we could add some more color as well like I've done with the dark gray, but there's still lots of details that are going to be added to that, right? Like uh, plant life, it can't just be slopes and grass. And then I decided to go with the green slopes on the cliff edge as well, just because maybe that uh, plant life and grass is sort of growing onto the cliffs, which is uh, quite natural and realistic. I started creating the pathway which will lead up to the castle, and we'll be adding more details to that. And of course, I've got to make some sort of 
transition coming down here as well. And that's the same with the water over here by the water mill as well. But it feels great to cover up some of that tan plate with the uh, dark azure and medium azure plate to blend in the moat and also the grass going around the castle. I'm not going to worry about adding plate to the backside because you're not going to see it when it's on that hill. That would just be a waste of parts. So I decided that I'm going to leave the back as is for now. But yeah, I'd say we're off to a pretty good start. Let's continue. So I've just got to add some more detail and blending to this thing now. We've got the water and the grass. I'm adding some slopes going around the border of that to try and isolate that moat so it looks separate from the grass. So just throwing down way more of those slopes to try and achieve that. This is just one of those things where it's like the more pieces that you throw at it, the better it's gonna look. I'm adding some different colors, uh, like one by one plates, cheese slopes, one by one studs. And then I'm also laying down some of the plate and I'm actually leaving some of that tan plate that's underneath that exposed. So it sort of pops through and adds a little bit of depth to the model as well. Adding these little mini pieces everywhere definitely breaks up the green color of this hill. And I really like the texture that it creates as well. Now I laid down brown plate for my pathway, but I actually wanted to add some more detail to that as well. So I lay down one by one plates, one by one studs, some of those quarter round dark gray tiles that I got from the pad wall, and it definitely improves the look of it. And like I mentioned earlier, the water by the water mill, I want that to flow down the hill. And same with the path as well. So I take out the slopes that we put in earlier, and then I put in the proper plate and brick to make sure that flows properly and then add some details as well. But yeah, this thing is really coming along, loving it so far. Looking pretty spiffy, green slopes, the trail, also the water, like how that flows down. The castle's positioned quite nicely there. There are some hard edges here that I've got to try and reduce by using more slopes. And then also I've got to figure out what we're going to do with the water here. If I'm going to be adding trans blue tiles and studs, plates and all that to add just another layer of detail to that water. It might look sort of weird because it'll be in two different depths, but I guess it's on two different depths right now just because that castle is placed on top of those plates. But like I mentioned, if I were to try and attach this castle or integrate it into the actual plate, it would be really difficult because we have so many angles. It would be pretty much impossible, in my opinion. Like, how am I supposed to integrate all of these angles and inset them into the actual plate? Sure, I could tack it down on some jumpers or something like that so the castle is actually tacked down. But when I place this in the Lego City, we're going to place the hill and then we're going to place the castle on top of it. And I don't think it really needs to be tacked down. And once again, I just really don't think there needs to be details back here because you're not going to see the details back there anyway. So we've got these slopes and all sorts of plate and rocks and all sorts of little details there with cheese slopes and one by one plates and studs. And now I'm thinking to myself, I probably should add water detail and maybe I should add some plant life as well. This set does use these little pre-molded trees and I understand why because you don't want to put a big towering tree in front of this castle because then you're going to block the castle. There is the one tree that's integrated into the walls over here and that looks amazing. I need to decide whether or not I'm going to use these small little pre-molded trees or the saplings that you find in my Lego city. Those are actually right down here. Or if I'm gonna add some bamboo, maybe some of these slopes here, maybe I'll build some big custom trees. Uh, or I'll just, you know, use these leaves and everything to create some sort of greenery in the grounds of the castle. These might come in handy, same with these here. But I just gotta be careful that I don't overcrowd my castle grounds with big massive trees and sort of block the views of the or block the view of the castle. Maybe some larger trees on the left and right side will work, but definitely not in front of it. I'm a huge fan of Lego trees. I've been building so many different trees for the Lego city. It is crazy. And you know what? We're going to be building more trees and adding more areas just like this here. I love landscaping. I've got to add some more in the downtown core. And then of course, we're going to continue developing this raised platform and I want everything to just be really nicely detailed like this platform here. I think these trees are the perfect size. They're the ones built using the one by one cylinders. I've built a crazy amount of these trees and I am currently out of cylinders so I actually had to rob these from the farm. 
But hey, I recently received a big order that's going to allow me to build Technic trees, so I would imagine some of the trees will get cycled through the campground anyway, so I didn't mind stealing them from somewhere else. And look who's cozy underneath that tree. He's playing his guitar or ukulele or whatever that is, hanging out. It's one of the Forestmen, which is a minifigure from this set. And on top of this tree, there's a little bluebird in his nest. And then there's some frogs just outside of the moat there, on the edge of the moat, enjoying the nicely tiled off water there. Family of frogs. All sorts of bamboo, saplings, and leaves went into the details as well. And over here, we've got a gentleman and his sheep. And then this water over by the water mill is nicely tiled off as well. Same with the little waterfall that flows down the hill there. So I think this turned out wonderfully, actually better than I imagined. Really excited about this here. It's, you know, it took some time. It took a, a lot of parts and a little bit of trial and error with the original construction, the base construction. It's my first time building a rolling hill. I've built lots of uh, cliff edges, but this is something a little bit different. I'm excited to place this in the LIGO city and check it out beside that other large rolling hill, which is still waiting details. Oh, actually, you know what? Before we place it, let's take a quick look at some before and after photos. Quite the improvement, hey? It's crazy how a bunch of pieces, mostly from the pad wall, can transform something like this. Take it from something that looks sort of square and blocky and not very attractive to something that looks pretty presentable. I'm really excited about this castle project. Placing this, let's just say, not going to be easy. The platform, no problem at all. But putting the castle on the platform, that's a different story. It's really big. It's fragile. It's got lots of pieces and plates that like to fall off the bottom of it, especially when you're grabbing it the way I am and sort of stretching over 40 inches on a step ladder, leaning and putting it onto the table. It's uh, not good at all. Something bad is bound to happen. And it's just to be expected. I mean, when you're stretching and reaching and trying to place things like this or the Ninjago Temple or the Mountain View Observatory Mountain, it just becomes a little bit difficult. And that's because I can't access my city on all four sides. So sometimes there's some awkward stretching and reaching, which results in, of course, broken LIGO. But either way, it's something that you just gotta push through and persist through. Ultimately, in the end, it doesn't take that long to place. There's a lot of things that have to be moved and shifted and put back on after the castle's placed, but in the end, it's done and it looks pretty good. I actually removed the castle once more and placed it again after the footage stopped because after placing it, I realized I'm missing one green wedge plate. It was there in the before and after photos, but it's not here when I'm placing it. I simply cannot find it anywhere. I guess when I watch the uh, time lapse of me placing this thing, I'll have to keep a keen eye out looking for that wedge plate because I don't know where it went. I don't get it because it's there. You can see it has the yellow flower beside that green tree right where my hand is. My thumb's currently covering it. I'm lifting it. I'm lifting it. I'm demolishing everything in its wake. The castle's destroying everything. I should have put the trees in afterward. Oh, where is the plate? Okay, now it's gone. Where did it go? I, I picked it up and everything. I don't know where it went. I'll have to lift this thing up again and get that wedge plate back. Put in spot once I uh, find it. <laughs> Pretty funny. But overall, it looks fantastic. I'm really happy with the outcome of this integration. Where exactly it's going to go on this platform, I'm not too sure. This hill might have to get rebuilt because I did acquire some more staircase elements. So I might be able to strengthen this up and remove some of these gaps that are forming on this hill. But maybe I'll reduce the size of it because maybe that one should be on the tallest peak. Is there going to be battles there happening? I'm not sure because it's part of the Lego city. I might have to remove some of those knight figures or put them inside the castle so it doesn't look like there's a battle happening because this should just be like a castle that overlooks the city. It shouldn't be an active medieval castle because we have a Lego city here. But I guess, you know, we've got all sorts of battles happening on Pop Culture Street. Uh, so I need to uh, continue working on more of these hills using the uh, mill splites up here, create some that are two bricks high, some that are one brick high, some that are a staircase high like that one there, and then start integrating this whole platform and build hills just like that there. Pretty exciting. Also, one thing I need to do is better 
develop the platform coverings so that they blend in with the hills and also hide the mills plates underneath because we don't want those exposed colors at all. But either way, there's my new and improved platform that hosts the Lion Knight's castle. Let me know what you think of it by commenting below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff. Farewell.